Hello, and thanks for watching this video. I'm Onsu Ha from MIT Media Lab. In this video, I'll be telling you about our research on contactless seismocardiography. This is a joint work with my colleagues Salah and Fadl. Our work is motivated by a simple question. Can you capture a person's heart recordings without any contact with the human body? Cardiovascular diseases are the number one cause of death in the world. It kills more people than all forms of cancer combined. In the United States alone, one person dies every 36 seconds from heart disease. Yet numerous medical studies have shown that early diagnosis and continuous heart monitoring can lower fatality rates by 30 to 70 percent depending on the type of heart disease. So why aren't all of us continuously monitoring uh, our hearts? All of the averages that can recover rich heart recordings have one thing in common. They all require contact with the human body, and many of them are quite cumbersome. I'm sure that someone might be wondering, but don't smartwatches like Apple Watch also get heart rate? Well, they do, but heart rate alone is not enough to diagnose the cardiovascular disease. Instead, you, you need methods to, that don't just get the average heart rate, but the entire heart recordings all the time, similar to what you get with an ECG. These recordings are much richer than just the heart rate, which allows using them to diagnose cardiovascular disease. So if you want to get heart recordings, today you have to rely on these contact-based and the fairly cumbersome devices. And even if you and I are willing to wear them, they are not suitable for certain sections of the population like elderly and babies who are not comfortable wearing them. Not only that, these te technologies are also not suitable if you want to monitor people from a distance. For example, today with COVID, many public places are monitoring the temperature of visitors from distance in a contactless way in order to minimize contagion. So it would be great if we could uh, also capture heart recordings remotely because, as some of you may know, COVID has been associated with lots of cardiovascular conditions. There are many other scenarios where you want non-contact approaches for heart recordings. For example, burn patients or other patients with sensitive skin. In this talk, what I want to tell you is how we can extract heart recordings without requiring any contact with the human body. The way we are going to do this is by re relying on wireless reflections of the human body. Let me tell you why, how this works. Our device sends a wireless signal and it reflects off human body and comes back. The device uses these reflections in order to capture the tiny vibration on the chest that correspond to the heart movements. So, what, uh, so whenever the heart contracts and relaxes, the captured reflections will exhibit peaks and valleys. In fact, our system can even capture microcardiac events, which correspond to the opening and the closing of heart valves that regulate blood flow between heart chambers. So if I zoom in more on these signals, we can see that our system can detect the aortic valve closing, the isovolumetric contraction, the mitral valve opening and the mitral valve closing, and the aortic valve opening. Every time one of these valves opens or closes, it, and, uh, it causes a tiny vibration which our system can detect and time. So we are able to extract the seismo seismocardiogram, which is a recording of the human heart that measures the heart seismic or mechanical movements. And it is these uh, microcardiac events and their timings that have been used to diagnose various cardiovascular conditions. In the rest of this video, I'll tell you how we can do this. I'll Describe to you RFSCG, a technology that allows us to capture and fully reconstruct SCG signals without requiring any contact with the human body. 
It is based on novel hybrid pipeline that combines signal processing with deep learning and consists of uh, learnable spatial temporal filters. And I'll show you our results from uh, over 40,000 heartbeats demonstrate that our system can automatically detect and precisely time of five microcardiac events with 99% accuracy. RF SUS architecture is composed of three main stages. First, it zooms in on the heart reflection by using 4D cardiac beamforming. Then, it translates the wireless reflections into SCG waveforms. And finally, it automatically detects labels and times the cardiovascular microcardiac events in the waveform. So, let me start with the 4D cardiac beamformer. Remember that our device uses wireless reflections in order to obtain heart recordings. But when it sends a wireless signal, it receives reflections from different objects in the environment, not just the human heart. In fact, it will even receive reflections from different parts of the human body. So the first question is, how can it isolate and zoom in on the reflection coming from the human heart. Ideally, we want to perform beamforming in order to focus on the heart signal. But how do you focus your beam if you don't know exactly where the heart is? Well, one option is to scan the environment and look for hearts. But how can you find it? Usually, in standard beamforming, you might be looking for the strongest reflector. So, is the heart the strongest reflector? No, it's not even the strongest reflections from the body, which might come from stomach or the head. So, is it the fastest moving object? The heart's heart is very tiny, and so also no. Then, is it just smallest movement? Well, that's a very difficult question because you might just be looking for noise, so the answer is also no. In order to zoom in on the heart's reflection, our idea is to introduce a 4D cardiac beamformer that leverages the heart's periodicity. At a high level, our beamformer searches in 3D space and in the frequency domain in order to search for heartbeat repetitions. Specifically, it takes each voxel in 3D space and extracts the time domain signal from the voxel. For example, it takes an XYZ voxel and it plots the vibration as a function of the time. Then it takes another one and again plots the vibration over time. And so on and so far until it is done scanning 3D space. Now, how can I know which of these corresponds to the heartbeat? I use my th fourth dimension. Specifically, assuming I know the heart rate, then I can project on its frequency and identify which of these has the strongest projection. Here, it turns out to be the second time domain signal, and if you look at these signals, you will see that indeed it has the cleanest signal, which is somehow looks like a heart recording. Of course, I have tried to describe this at a high level. In practice, you can obtain projections. Uh, using a 4D projection equation is a function of the x, y, z coordinates and the frequency, and the maximum is obtained by normalizing over all voxels and frequencies. So the key take-home message that the, is that the 4D cardiac beamformer can take a can zoom in on the reflections from human heartbeats and the extracted heart rate. Now, in my explanation, I have assumed that we already know the actual heart rate. In practice, we do not know it, and in the paper, we also explain how the 4D cardiac informer can also estimate the heart rate and extract the heartbeat variability. So now we have a way to isolate the heart's reflection. And here's a sample time domain reflection that our 4D cardiac informer obtains. 
In fact, when we compare it to the seismocardiogram obtained from a human on body uh, accelerometer, they look very similar. This looks great. Except that when we try to get the correlation, it's only around 0.6, even when they are perfectly time synchronized. And that's a relatively low correlation. Indeed, when you look more closely at these signals, we can see that even though the regions with the peaks are similar, the peaks are actually shifted and transformed with respect to each other. But if we need to accurately time microcardiac events, we need to know exactly where the right peaks are. And we want to figure out translation between these two modalities. In principle, we knew that this translation should be possible because they are both based on the same mechanical activity coming from the heart. Now the simplest approach to translate would be to implement some form of filter. For example, we can place linear FIR filters that transforms one to the other. But as we experimented with this idea, we realized that linear filters alone did not give us a good accuracy. In practice, we needed a generalized transformation with both linear and nonlinear components. And we stacked multiple different layers on top of each other. And we did, when we did that, we ended up with a CNN, or a convolutional neural network. And by implementing a deep neural network, we were able to increase our correlations from 0.4 or 0.6 to around 0.8 or 0.9, which is considered a high correlation. In our paper, we describe our multi-layer architecture in detail and show how it can transform wireless reflections into SCG waveforms. So far, I've told you how we can zoom in on the heart's reflection and translate it into SCG waveform. Now that we have translated waveform, I want to time microcardiac events on the waveform. Automatic labeling is a well-developed field that has seen significant advances in computer vision over the past few years, especially in the context of image segmentation. Instead of a 2D image, we wanted to label a 1D SGG signal. So we adapted a state-of-the-art image segmentation network called the UNET architecture to our problem domain. Our architecture is trained to learn filters for five different microcardiac events, as you can see here. And once it learns these filters, it can automatically detect and label the microcardiac events that correspond to mechanical activities like valves opening and closing of and closing and uh, uh, heart chamber contraction. Now that I've described you to describe to you our overall architecture, let me tell you about our implementation. We used an RF sensor that operates at 77 gigahertz. Multi-channel antennas are etched on the board, and it was used for beamforming. For ground truth, we employed an on-body accelerometer that is strapped on the subject's chest. The RF and the accelerometer boards are synchronized with external clock source. We extracted more than 40,000 heartbeats from 21 healthy subjects wearing regular clothing on different days. To eliminate outliers, we employ the Tukis fence method that is able to remove short time windows with an abnormal power. After this, we adopted several data augmentation techniques such as overlapping, stretching, and noising to avoid overfitting. Next, let me show you some of our results. First, I'm interested in evaluating the system's reconstruction accuracy. To do so, I will plot correlation between the ground truth SCG signal I obtained from an on-body accelerometer and the contactless output, and I will do so for different subjects. We also implemented a state-of-the-art baseline for vital sign sensing using wireless reflections. 
First, let me show you the results of the baseline. As you can see, most of the subjects have this correlation around or below 0.5. This is a poor correlation, which means that they cannot really extract rich SGG waveforms. Now, let me show you our show our results. As you can see, RF SGG can get about double the correlation. Actually, many of them have the correlation even higher than even higher than 0.8 or even 0.9. This shows that it is able to accurately reconstruct the entire SGG waveform. Next, let's see RF SGG's accuracy in timing microcardiac events. Remember that remember uh, different peaks and valleys in the waveform correspond to different microcardiac events, such as opening and closing of valves and the contraction of heart chambers. On the x-axis, I will plot accuracy, and on the y-axis, I will plot the CDF. Here are our results. As you can see, RF SGG's median accuracy is higher than 98% across all five microcardiac events. Interestingly, three of these micro microcardiac events have a median accuracy higher than 99.5%. All of these belong to the systolic component of the cardiac cycle, which is when the heart contracts most. As you can see, these have sharper peaks. The other two have slightly lower accuracy, but still higher than, uh, still higher than 98%. This come from the diastolic component of the heart cycle. As you can see in the figure, they also have slightly less sharp peaks. This is uh, the same reason why when when try to heart, hear heart sounds, you get two main sounds in each bit, and the first and the first and stronger one comes from systole, and the weaker one comes from the diastole. And more importantly, these results show that the RF SUG can detect and time microcardiac events. To conclude, I'll talk. I told you about RF SUG, a system that captures and reconstructs SUG recordings without requiring any contact with the human body. The system is based on a hybrid pipeline that combines signal processing with deep learning. And I told you about how, achieve, how it achieves high accuracy over 98% for uh, timing microcardiac events. Looking forward, I'm very excited about pushing this project forward because it has the potential to help us address the single biggest cause of worldwide fatalities. And we are now working with the medical doctors on testing our system on subjects with cardiac conditions, such as heart failure, ischemia, or coronary artery disease. With this, I'll end my presentation. Thanks so much for watching this video.